Hey folks, uh, welcome back to Anish Learns to Code. I'm aware that the last video I uploaded was in 2019 and right now it's 2023, almost November. <laughs> so apologies for that, sorry. Uh, but better late than never. Uh, if you have any other future uh, suggestions for videos, please feel free to comment it out and I will try my best to make it. I am trying to make a comeback on YouTube. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so in this video, I will discuss a very hot topic, how to, uh, what kind of questions does CERN ask in the asynchronous video interview, in the Sonru in, uh, video interview. So uh, many, many, many people, many people have asked me this question on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on my personal WhatsApp number, how they found it, I don't want to know. But anyways, uh, if I had a dollar for every time somebody asked me regarding this question, I, will beat, I would have beaten Taylor Swift to the billionaire game. But here we are. <laughs> okay, so basically when you apply to CERN, either for the fellowship program, which is now called grad program, or the CERN uh, technical student program, once your application is complete, and only to all completed applications, CERN gives out a link for an asynchronous video interview. So when I applied for the technical student in 2018, I received a link for uh, Sonru. Sonru is basically a third party software as a service that CERN used in my time to asynchronously ask people questions. So in this, a question flashes on your screen, the computer asks question, no human is involved, and you just have to answer them. So for each question, you get like 60 seconds, 90 seconds, max to max 120 seconds, not more than 120 seconds for sure. So not more than two minutes. So in this, about six to seven questions flash on your screen, and every question there's a fixed time. You answer the question, your answer, audio video is recorded, and you move on to the next question. So in my time, this was done in Sonru. So I have now uh, asked that it, uh, some other people who have given this test recently, CERN is no longer using Sonru, but they're using a different service, but the overall process is still the same. They're still using a third party service with asynchronously asked question. The question flashes on your screen and you have to answer. So my entire point in making this video is just to tell you about my experience, what kind of questions CERN asked me in 2018, and I've even talked to other candidates who have applied recently, what kind of questions so and ask them, so that this gives you an overall idea of what kind of questions so and asks and what kind of questions you can receive. So the total number of questions that CERN has is limited. It's not like a real human is sitting behind and continuously creating new questions and continuously adding new questions. What CERN has basically done is they've composed a fixed finite set of questions. My estimate is like 20, 25, not more than that. They have added it in the system and the system randomly selects about six to seven questions from these predefined qu uh, question set. I can even be wrong and maybe they don't even have like random a predefined 25, 20 question set. They actually only have like six, seven questions and everybody gets the same question. But even in that case, my, so the sample set is in that case even smaller. So I'm pretty sure that the sample set is not larger than 25 and the overall questions asked are generally very similar and very same. So if you're applying for technical student program, if you're applying for the grad program, which was previously called the fellowship program, uh, you will experience this interview unless, unless you have already worked at CERN before, you have already given this interview once before and you already cleared the, the your previous round. So for example, in my case, I applied for technical student program in 2018. I first received a link for the Sondra interview, the asynchronous interview, I gave that. After that, I received, uh, I had a real interview with like a actual real person who works at CERN and I cleared that and I got selected as a technical student in 2018. In uh, 2020, when I applied for the fellowship program, at that point of time, I did not have to once again give the asynchronous video interview because I had once cleared that, I had already cleared that once. So if you have already cleared it once, you will not have to give it again, but still, you will have to clear it once. So minimum one time, everybody will have to go through it. So yeah, we can, here we go. So basically, no matter what field you're applying for, if you're applying for, let's say a physics related domain, I applied for technical, computer science related domain, you're applying for mathematics, research, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, you're applying for HR, you're applying for any sort of role, the questions will not, I repeat, the questions are not specifically tuned, tailored for that field. For example, if I applied 
for a field in um, computer science for software development my questions were not related to software development if somebody applies for mechanical engineering electrical engineering their questions will not be related to that questions are extremely generic extremely 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 generic and they are blanketly cover everyone they are not domain specific they don't cover domains such as mechanical engineering or chemical engineering or hr or hiring or anything they don't cover any domain so the kind of questions it was a long time ago that i received were what motivates to uh, what motivates you to work at cern why do you want to work at cern uh, what is what kind of environment would you like to work in what kind of environment um, is good for you what kind of environment would you not like to work in uh, what are some projects that you have done tell us um, what kind of projects you have solved in the past what was the most difficult project that you solved how did you tackle that problem what is the most difficult problem that you have ever faced uh, and tackled it like in a professional environment and i also received a question uh, i remember uh, how did you hear about cern i gave a very fun answer in that i heard about cern uh, by reading it uh, by reading about it in angels and demons in dan brown so uh, just because i gave this answer does not mean this is the answer that you have to give to get selected it's not like some magic answer that i can just tell you for this question this is the magic answer give this magic answer you will be selected i don't have any tricks up my sleeve i cannot pull out a rabbit like this this is the ho ho hook that you can just do so there's no such thing like as that so and also my experience will not be the same as your experience i have um my past internship experience before i applied at cern will be totally different from your experience so you have to use your experience to tell okay these are the projects that i did and this is the problem that i solved i can't just say tell you like say this and the end you'll be selected uh and i received another question uh when i applied in 2018 that give a uh, give a description about yourself and if possible give this in french so for those of you who don't know uh cern actually is located in geneva switzerland and it is on the border of switzerland and france so like half of it is in switzerland and the other half is in france like geographically speaking i'm not lying and there are two official languages at cern one is french and one is english so even cern cern in itself is a french uh, acronym which is central european pour la recherche nucléaire which is like the european center for nuclear for atomic research and so at that time when i applied in 2018 i did not know french today i know amtiva a little french but at the time i did not know any french so i answered it in english and that's okay uh because my field which i applied for like software development you don't need to know french to write code or to do software development and cern itself is extremely extremely international it's not like i was one international guy between french and swiss people on the contrary there are hardly any french and swiss people in cern everybody is from somewhere else it's actually a miracle if you're working at cern and you meet a swiss person i know that sounds crazy but yes <laughs> in my team there were hardly like two or three swiss people and everyone else was from somewhere else like european countries and yes india as well of course uh so it's okay if you don't know french and if you give this answer in english for some roles for example um if your role is client facing for example if you have to work in hr and you have to talk to people in such roles maybe it does make a difference if you know french but for example for a very technical role where you will not be directly talking to many people but working in a technical team which is very international where actually the common language will be english knowing french is not so important as it was not so important in my case so once again to reiterate to repeat the questions that are asked in the sondro interview in the sondro asynchronous questions you get about 6 to 7 questions they are very generic they are not at all not at all domain specific and the questions are um pre preset and the Uh, each question has a time limit so like i ramble on you cannot ramble on you cannot just keep on speaking so i think every question will be approximately 90 seconds if it's a big question they can give 120 seconds but definitely not more than 120 seconds so what i suggest you to do first thing you have to apply if you receive this link if your application was complete and they send you a link for the asynchronous video interview congratulations first of all and the second thing that i would suggest is that you just practice okay these are a few sample questions for each question i create a sample answer which i can give in under 90 seconds not more than 90 seconds practice these questions 
go to the asynchronous video portal that Sona is using. Over there, test your audio and video as well. So over there, there, there'll be an option like, okay, look at the camera, test your video, speak, test your audio so that you can see that, okay, your video is clear, your audio is clear, your audible, everything is perfect. Go ahead and give that. Once you have given this interview, there is no guarantee that you will be selected at CERN or not. There is also no guarantee that you will receive an other interview by a human. So this is a little um, weird, but you are being hired by, you are applying for CERN. And if you're hired, you will be hired by CERN, but actually you're not being hired by CERN. So CERN internally is composed of many, 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 many different groups. And each group has even more, many, many, many different teams. And I know teams vary widely. They extremely extreme they vary extremely widely in CERN so there's no standard CERN standard standard CERN interview standard that in CERN interviews this is how you proceed these are the questions uh, that you ask this is how you assess a candidate based on this assessment you select or you reject a candidate there is absolutely no standard I know teams that look at resume and hire candidates for two three years the end they didn't even interview the person looked at the resume done I know teams that take three interviews first they give a face-to-face -face interview then they give a programming test, then they take a follow-up of the programming test. I know teams that put in a lot of effort, they take two, three interviews. I know teams that look at the resume, they are convinced, the end. So there is no standard procedure, no standard interview procedure at CERN. And there is no standard recommendation that I can give you that focus on this, learn this, and uh, focus on oops, focus on uh, data structure algorithms, because I have no idea. What kind of interview will you get? Will you even get an interview? And I cannot say, okay, focus on data structure algorithms because that's what CERN asks. They can ask it. One team can focus on that. The other team can focus on HTML. When I applied for technical student, in my first interview that I received, I was very excited. And because in my university, in India, there's a preset mentality that you have to focus on data structures algorithms because every company asks that. I had the same mentality. I, I, I worked my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> learning, uh, just solving problems for data structure and algorithms. Uh, the interview starts, the person asks me, I will ask you very simple basic questions in Java. Anybody who has ever worked in Java can answer them. I had not uh, written Java code in more than eight months, more than one year probably. And I was very good at DSA. I could not answer basic Java questions and I was rejected. In the second interview that happened, they asked me basic CSS HTML questions. So there is absolutely no standard standardized way of assessing a candidate at CERN and I cannot give you any recommendation regarding CERN, CERN room interview questions there is a standard I can say something after that good luck <laughs> good luck <laughs> so yeah uh, that's it for this video thanks a lot for um, I hope this helps I sincerely hope that this will help you in answering uh, confidently your CERN, CERN room questions and See you in Switzerland, hopefully. Okay, ciao.